So the trees are blooming with fresh new flowers and stretching out new leaves in Vancouver. And I'm on the SkyTrain now going to Waterfront Station. So the Waterfront Station is a heritage building. I think it used to be a train station decades ago. Walking out, a very nice busker performing for us. Yeah, so this is one of the many blocks of downtown Vancouver. Very busy, a mix of old and new glossy buildings. So this building is the Harbor Center. So on top, we have a restaurant and um, a viewing deck where you can see a bird eye view of Vancouver's waterfront area and the cityscapes. So the cherry blossoms are ready to bloom. I can't wait to do urban sketches with cherry blossoms very soon. And I'm ready to across the street to a Deville Coffee. Here I am outside the cafe. So I'm here pretty early in the morning today. So hopefully I'll grab that perfect seat by the window so I can have a view of the waterfront station building. And we'll order a cup of coffee and the breakfast wrap. Yay! Lucky me, so I'm gonna grab that seat. So here are two pouches for my sketching materials. This one is for my pens and pencils. And this one is for my watercolor palette and brushes and the, and the towel and my gooseneck tripod. And everything fits perfectly inside my little backpack. And here's my current sketchbook, the Etcher Mixed Media Sketchbook, my cup of latte and vegetarian breakfast wrap ready for me to sketch. Yeah, so this gray pouch is kind of like a, a pen case holding my pencil for drafting my um, Sailor's Fuley fountain pens. Today I'm going to start drawing my cup of uh, coffee and breakfast wrap as usual. And I've got two lovely models right beside me and I love the elegant style of their outfits. So I'm not sure uh, when are they going to stand up and depart. So before they leave, I really want to capture their portraits in my sketchbook, looking out the window and chatting about life. So I just started the contour outline of her hairstyle with uh, suggestions of hair strengths inside the shape, the neck, and the contour outline of her body formed by the shape of her loose sweater in lovely velvet color. So it's pretty rare to see people dressed up in beautiful colors these days. So most people these days, they uh, tend to wear black and grays and blues, mostly. Uh, now, just uh, drawing the, the shape of the hair of the other ladies, can't really see her face from this angle. So the portraits of these two ladies are fairly easy to do, just the back view, but still with a sense of narrative, using powerful lines and shapes to add a lively spirit uh, for their bodies, and also adding the two cups of coffee, uh, one of the ladies person umbrella to add further identity details and the stripes on the umbrella more details for the handbag like the zippers and stitching lines yet yeah, so I'm really thankful that these two ladies showed up right in time for me to sketch them yeah so this is very much my foreground area okay now I see uh, two pots of Actually, fake plants, uh, very nice decorations to add on to behind the, the coffee cups. All right, so go accomplished. I capture the two ladies. If they leave right now, I can still uh, paint from my memory. The line drawing stage is the most important. So now just uh, relaxing and adding the graphic details on the uh, paper coffee cup. For the breakfast wrap, I'm not going to draw them too big. So first of all, I'm outlining the napkin under the wrap. This is one of the halves, the opening of the wrap and the very simple fillings of eggs and beans in there. And the other piece, the opening and the fold of the tortilla wrap, the grill marks. And same for this one, the grill marks, adding nice texture and details. So this time I'm keeping my food drawing pretty small. So they're not competing with the uh, with the ladies on the right hand side and the cityscape outside the window so yeah it really depending on the situation i may not draw my food and drink way too big on the page so that's it for the line drawing park the ladies are still engaged in conversation they're still here 
so I can paint from real life. How lucky I am today. So I'm gonna paint the ladies and my breakfast wrap and the coffee with Mongjo watercolors. And my two lovely water brushes from Holbein and the towel. So I use a limited set of uh, watercolors, about 12 of them in the palette, and just two brushes to paint. So I don't get overwhelmed uh, with you know, having too many choices. I like to have a limited number of materials, so I'm always staying focused on my practice. As usual, I'm going to start with a gentle yellow, yellow-orange wash. So this is very much yellow ochre mixed with a tiny bit of orange, diluted with a lot of water. And for the coffee, I'm using a bit of orange brown. And same for the wrap, they share a lot of similar colors. And more uh, concentrated lemon yellow for the eggs inside the wrap. Diluted magenta for the ladies' handbag. For the skin color, it's a mix of orange and red diluted with a lot of water. Shade the handbag a little bit with more concentrated magenta. And the umbrella has a bit of yellow stripes on it. And the lady, her hair is mostly white, but shaded with uh, a light brown. The other lady, uh, her hair is brown, shaded with a sepia on the bottom half. And shade this lady's hair more precisely using thinner brush marks of diluted brown. And really enjoying my workstation here. It's very spacious. Now, my next step is to paint the beautiful velvety color of her sweater. Starting with a uh, chronogodon rose mixed with a bit of magenta. Wet onto wet, the same color. Mix in a bit of royal purple to shade her back, which is uh, against the, uh, the window. So the left edge of her body is much brighter than her back. Because the window is on the left in front of them, uh, coloring her collar of her inner shirt with green. Shade a uh, shadow for her hair on her neck. Using leftover brown to paint the grill marks on the wrap. And a bit more concentrated orange brown to shade uh, one side of each uh, wrap piece and to add the cheese flavor at the same time as well. Paint the little stripes on the umbrella with cobalt blue. So the paper under the breakfast wrap is actually a kind of black to me that is more blue-violet kind. So I mix that color by uh, mixing cobalt blue and royal purple and a little bit of green together. So the black, it looks more sensational this way, much more like a, a nighttime sky. And same for most of the graphic area of the paper cup. And for the wooden tray, this thickness side against the uh, daylight is a darker sepia. Using thinner brush marks for the grainy texture of the wooden tray. Final shading using leftover gray, diluted with a lot of water. That's it. Here is a look of my finished sketches of my latte, breakfast wrap, the ladies, and it is a visual narrative of my current moment. A bright sunny morning here at Waterfront. So the next minute, the ladies just departed and they are gone. A lot of times people you know, move away really fast that I didn't get a chance to stand up and be natural, talk to them, show them my sketches. I think they really had to go. Uh, but anyway, I'm very thankful for them being my models. Now I'm moving on to the next stage of my sketchbook work. So now I just use pencil and spend about three to five minutes doing a very simple draft. The three large sections of the waterfront building and the other historic building on the right hand side. That's all I need to um, move on to drawing directly with ink pen. So I use the pencil first just to make sure that I want to include uh, the station building the way that I want it to look on my sketchbook page. And yeah, and then for the rest of the details, I can just improvise with my sailor's fountain pen. There's actually so many layers of uh, roof details. So these uh, decorational segments on the very top of the buildings at even distances. So this is the, uh, the middle part of the waterfront building, a little higher than the two wings. And then here I have a lamppost with street signs, uh, traffic lights, 
hanging on it, very busy with a lot of wires as well. And then finishing the uh, the other side of the waterfront building, starting to add in the street sign and the other one. So this city block is the intersection of Seymour Street and West Cordova Street. And now starting to attach the uh, traffic light to the lamppost. And another one on the other side of the post. Uh, there's a traffic sign here that says no right turn. And now I'm starting to draw the simple outline of the other historic building, showing a little bit into my page. Now I'm just drawing these little pieces hanging below the roof area of the building, which is very typical of a classical style architecture. And then another horizontal line going lower towards the right, because I have a sense of perspective here with this building. I'm looking at this building from an angle. That's why it's, uh, it looks like it's sinking down towards the right because of the, uh, the angle I'm looking at this building. Now having fun filling in these medium and small shapes of the windows here for the upper exterior of the building. And then more of these decorational uh, carvings. A lot of them are little squares and rectangles. And then drawing these hanging uh, street signs and another lamp supporting the wire holding the street sign. And then some two more traffic lights hanging on the wire. It's a very busy intersection with so many traffic lights and signs. Now I want to focus on the left side of this building by adding these two columns with the crowns on top of each column in swirl shapes. Yeah, another lovely feature of a classical style architecture. And then the green window frames on the lower part of the exterior. Yeah, and then ground level, I see newspaper boxes and a person passing by to give a sense of proportion that this building is much bigger than it seems on paper. Yeah, and that's very much it for this uh, first one third of this uh, station building, final polish and the brick pattern in loose lines and the railings on the very top of the building, which is kind of a balcony up there, probably not, just for decoration. Um, okay, now moving on to the middle section, starting with the very top, there's this uh, British Columbia flag, the flag of our province, and then these patterns in simple geometric shapes of rectangles. Uh, another column there. The layers between each, um, each level of this building. More vertical lines that I see of columns, patterns, and the window frame there in the middle. Smaller window panels inside the frame, and I'll color in these window panels with solid brown ink, just so there's really a space behind the windows, the interior of the building. Uh, another layer, yeah, simple pattern. And then interruption of the, uh, the street sign here. So basically this uh, waterfront station building is divided into two levels. The upper level, I'm not sure what it is. Uh, and the, the ground level is a really grand hall in there much higher than the uh, second level up there. More windows and uh, carvings of patterns and the wires connecting all of the street signs and the traffic lights together there. Keep drawing the entrance area of the station building with those uh, green window frames. Uh, the crowns for the column there. And that's very much it for the middle section. It's a little easier compared to uh, the one on the left, the left wing. And I just drew a little street lamp on the uh, far distance on the right. Now moving on to drawing the medium and small details of the right wing here, uh, mostly window frames and glass panels inside the frames, uh, more columns and windows in between each column. Yeah, so it's very satisfying to fill these large chunks 
with windows, and this building is coming to life. And they decided to uh, color in uh, the traffic lamp post with solid brown ink, so it stands up better in the foreground. And finishing up my line drawing stage, keep observing and seeing the movement, the turbulence, and the all of the energies out there. And now I'm just using these loose lines, gentle hand pressure to get the layers of clouds done in the sky. Very, very delicate and soothing. So that's it of my drawing process. I also drew two seagulls in the sky. Now it's time to enjoy the watercolor painting process. Yeah, so now I'm just wetting the entire building area with clear water. And then I just punched on a super diluted um, yellow ochre for the base layer. Now I'm ready to punch on the uh, local color. Yeah, very much the original color of the uh, brick building. It's a mix of burnt sienna and orange applied very loosely as a second layer. A little higher ratio of burnt sienna in certain areas. The color is always very unstable on a seemingly uh, flat surface. So this building in general, it looks like orange brown, right? But in uh, certain areas, it might be looking more brown, having a higher ratio of burnt sienna because it's uh, in, in a shaded area. Other areas might be looking a little more orangey and in a diluted color value because it's um, exposed to more daylight or the sunshine. So that's what I mean by uh, the color on a seemingly flat surface might be unstable. It's because uh, the daylight, the mother nature is always affecting everything under the sun. So on a bright sunny day like this, I see a higher range of color values on many, many things in the world, even the clouds. So I'm using a kind of a purplish gray. Uh, it's, a, it's a mix of cobalt blue, and a higher ratio of royal purple into it, and a tiny bit of green to mute the purple down a little bit to shade these clouds using a, a pretty watery or light value of gray. Yeah, so now it's time to move on to the next layer uh, for the building before painting the blue sky. So yeah, so now I'm mixing burnt sienna, yeah, pretty much just pure burnt sienna and just punch it in with my medium tip water brush. Uh, this building, it needs more solid colors of brown, partially here and there. So this station building, it has a range of beautiful analogous colors. So in, in other words, colors that are very similar to each other. I started with uh, the lightest of these colors, which is orange brown, and then the mid brown, and now uh, getting more darker or concentrated brown around the edges here and there. Yeah, most of these shaded areas are in between the columns. Yeah, so just punching this uh, stronger brown, which is uh, very much burnt sienna here and there, at the same time not overpainting. Yeah, so this darker brown is not covering up too much of the uh, more vibrant orange, orange brown before. Uh, shading in these uh, window panel areas with a purplish gray and painting some brick areas that I missed in between some of the columns. Okay, final polish for this building. Uh, glaze on a little bit diluted yellow for these columns. These, the, the white columns and those white areas are illuminated by the sunshine. Though, so they do have a little bit mellow yellow glowing on those white surfaces. Now it's time to paint this pure blue sky with uh, cerulean blue, slightly diluted. The sky it, um, is always a translucent blue, not a very solid blue like a uh, blue wall. The air is flowing, so that's why uh, the color is more of a tint of blue. Okay, so now I'm ready to add on some cool colors these lovely greens for the uh, street signs in contrast to the uh, station building which contains a bunch of warm colors. Uh, shade these window panels a bit more with leftover gray window frames using uh, Viridian green, the old-fashioned green. 
Next step is to shade these um, cylindrical columns. The sun was on the right, so the left side of these columns are uh, clearly shaded with a bluish gray, as I sense. And same for these white areas, a diluted bluish gray here in my palette. Left side for these columns, make sure there's contrast and accentuate the three dimensionality and then uh, finish painting these brick areas that I missed with orange brown and then uh, burn sienna. So this section of the street here uh, in downtown Vancouver is paved with terracotta bricks matching the color of the uh, station building, which is really cool, orange brown, and then shade in between the columns with uh, more slightly darker sepia. Color in the uh, traffic lights with vibrant yellow orange. Shade the left side of these green signs with a darker shade of green because the sun is on the right. and just uh, doing some final colorings of little items here and there. You could slow down the video if you want to. There's an option here on YouTube that you can slow down the video two times or four times slower. This is actually eight times faster than my actual painting speed. And that's it. Here is a look of my finished sketch on location. So the entire drawing and painting process, it took me one hour and 30 minutes on location. So thank you so much for watching this video, everyone. If you like it, please click like and leave me a comment below. Subscribe to my channel for weekly updates. So I update my channel with two fresh new videos every week. Here's me and my finished sketch. I will see you again very soon next time. Bye everyone, take care.